Hello folks, welcome. MX23.3, MaxF CE Desktop. I am filming in 1080, so adjust your YouTube player accordingly if necessary. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, little tricks you can do with your file manager Thunar. Uh, toolbars and stuff like that, uh, all the way down to making backups. Now we can certainly use uh, a lot of different tools when we talk about backups, but uh, more importantly, I'm just going to show you what you can do with your file manager today. Not every single tool, but some tools that you can utilize. And this is geared toward new users, but certainly I think even uh, medium to seasoned users can probably use a tip or two. Subscription key is in the corner. Welcome folks, filming again in 1080. So this is Thunar. Love that logo, 418.4. Mark is just a made up name. So I'm going to talk about uh, windows, icons, and toolbars. Now right now there's hardly any tools up there, so we're going to start with that. Right click on the house, configure toolbar. Turn on some of these tools that you need, or turn them all on if you like. I'm going to turn all of them on, because I have no idea that some of you folks may or may not need certain tools but we might as well fire this all up because of the fact is you have plenty of room on your panel bar, including terminal. And I'm gonna use Alt and F4 to close that. All right, we have, starting over here, we have the undo, redo, and then we have the plus or minus for your icon sizes. And then of course, bringing it back to 100% normal size. Again, filming in 1080. We can also look at it in different views and we can also do split view. Split view is uh, can also be done this way. And then I'm going to hold down my control key. Now, what kind of computer am I using? I might as well get this out of the way. I'm using a desktop or a tower computer with a fairly standard keyboard and computer mouse with a scroll wheel. I'm going to hold down my control key while scrolling up and down and I'm not going to click this next screen. I'm just going to scroll in here. I'm switching with my mouse. My mouse knows the difference between this divider. I'm not clicking anything. All I'm doing is scrolling back and forth to resize the icons. Back and forth. Now I'm going to let go of the control key. And I'm going to turn this off. We can come back to that a little bit later. Edit Preferences. This is normally off by default. Now what does that setting do? Well, you can see the current sizes of these. When this is off, that means all of the icons in here will be the same size, okay? If I turn this on though, and if I make Mark's home folder, Mark is just a made up name, small, I can enlarge these. And they'll remember the sizes based on this setting if you desire that. If not, leave it off. The second thing about your tools, again, this is all about tools today, not every single setting, but a lot about tools, is your side pane has two modes to it. It has a tree mode, which is control E. So if you want to try to remember that, E for tree. And the other one is control B for shortcuts. So the shortcuts are currently set to 32, and that's what I'm looking at. And it'll be 16 as the smallest. And then this is jumbo. And if you noticed, it just kicked this thing way over to the side. These are still humongous icons. All right, we're not gonna deal with that. They're way too big. But I'm gonna drop this back to 64, but this is still way over on this side. So what I'm gonna do is click and drag that over here. So since I'm barely able to see everything, I could leave it here in this mode, or I can drop it down one more. And this is more comfortable for me on my screen resolution, filming in 1080. My screen is, um, well, it's 43 inches. You can't tell that on YouTube though. I usually like a lot of different windows. That's why I like big monitors, but that's just me. Some people like multiple monitors and they also give you trouble sometimes. 
So what's the other mode? Tree mode. I'm going to click out so this goes gray and hit uh, Control E for tree mode. 24 is current size. 16 is the smallest. And do I dare go big? Well, I'll go 160. And then something in between. And they're literally in a tree. All right, switching between the two, if you don't feel comfortable with the keyboard thing, then go click. There, they are here though. And this is standard mode. The behavior I have set for double click, that is my favorite with all file managers. Now the next setting is gonna be in the advanced tab, but I'm just gonna make preference to this. If some of my subscribers have seen quite a few of my 400 plus videos. And you know, you may have ran across a couple of them that have script files using like rsync for backups, that kind of stuff. So if you're fairly new to running script files, I would think twice about turning this on if you're new to script files. That's why there is a triangle here. Okay. I personally like to have the system ask me, unless I'm doing fully automated, and I usually use other services for that kind of stuff or run it in the background. But again, for new users, be careful with that one. You want it to ask you. It's a security thing. All right, shortcuts. One of the shortcuts is that F3. F3, is, again, is this. So let me close that now that we're on the last tab here. So whether I do it this way or use F3, it does the same job. And again, depending on your window size, now I can double click this blue line, double click the blue line to make it go back. It's the same thing as me doing that. Okay. So if I were to um, hold down my control key and point to either one of these, if I point to this side, I'm not clicking, I'm just pointing, holding down my control key, I can resize this icon. And then if I point over here, I can, I'm still holding the control key and I get it to the size I want. I let go of the control key and they'll stay in that size. Then I can click this and do, uh, click the divider if I want to separate those two. You can certainly go full screen if you like. What good is this for? All right. USB drive is over here. You can see that by the address bar. So a lot of our storage devices are quite a bit larger than they were when I first started. I still remember eight inch floppy drives that have hardly any storage space on them. So what is on my one terabyte drive? Well, I got 867 gigabytes still left on it, but uh, I have a um, backup from an Arch system that I did the other day on the 23rd and using 7Z and everything is in the box. Personal files. Remember, there's lots of tools out there, including snapshots, but we're just doing personal backups. So I have MX stuff and that, that folder is empty. So what I'm gonna do is deposit a backup that I'm gonna perform using, the, using this file manager here, Thunar. I could just leave this in split pane, Control A, selects that side of the house, and I can work with that screen, but since the, uh, real estate is kind of precious. I'm going to actually click out for a second and hit the F3 three key and go back to Mark's home folder. And then I'm going to hit Control A. Then I'm going to right click and talk about some archiving tools. As soon as you pop this box up, it says compress on it. That doesn't mean that all these tools do compression. Most of them do, yes, but some of them do not. 7Z is compressed. You saw that backup I had on that Archbase system was in 7Z. So that also exists here, that tool. You also have zip at the bottom and you have tar kind of in the middle. What is tar anyways? Tape archive. Tape archive has been around since the Unix days, like me. There's also tar.7Z, Z, BZ, 2, GC, LZMA, and all the rest of these. If you've ever downloaded a personal icon theme or a mouse cursor theme or pointer, uh, you'll find a lot of them are also in tar formats with compression. So what I'm gonna do here though, since I have the, all the folders selected, I am going to type in the word backup. This will be a static backup. 
If you need to do folder synchronization, look into my videos on rsync or grsync. I'm going to give this a date because again, this is static backup. And today's date is 830, 2024. So I'm going to be using not 7z, which is compressed. I'm going to be using tar and hit create. Now tar backups are very quick. All right, sometimes it does close the file manager. That's okay. Everything is in there though. So from desktop all the way down to that last file right here. So this is the one we're looking at. So the last folder or directory was this one. And you can see the byte sizes in here. So everything is in this tar ball or that's what a lot of folks in the Linux community call it, but I, I have the nickname called Tarbox. This is not compressed. So um, it's roughly 500 megabytes. Now on what I'm going to do is use only three folders, maybe documents, hold down the control key, music and pictures. We'll just do three. Right click, create an archive. I will call this one test one and uh, tar and hit create. And you can see it's done really quickly. So that was the full backup of all the folders. And this one just has three. Now using the same three documents, music and pictures, I'm going to use zip and call this one test two zip okay and it will pause here for a minute because it's compressing and then what I'm going to do next is using the same three do another archive using 7z which is at the top and we will call that one test three 7z and hit go. Test 37. Oh, you get the idea. All right, so this one will take a second because it has a little tighter compression than the zip does. And uh, when it finishes, we're going to compare those three. In the interim, what I can talk about though is if I wanted to put those on this device in this folder, I can certainly do that while that is actually working. So I'm making my file manager work a little harder. So now I'm transferring that total backup into that um, folder here on the USB device called MX stuff. And I'll back this out because I started with two folders. Now I have a total backup in here. And why is that a good idea to put backups outside the current booted in drive in case you lose the drive? If you have the luxury of a USB stick or a USB hard drive, I would use it. Maybe you have no second backups. It's like uh, internal hard drives is what I'm getting at. All right, let's get back on topic. I'm gonna turn this off and go back to Mark's home folder. So we did three, this one is three folders, three folders and three folders. So let's go take a look at the properties on all these just to give you an idea of what basic bits and bytes that it's using. Now, a lot of people don't care about compression nowadays for home use because our storage devices are quite large. That's why I'm making mention of tar because it's not compressed and it's fast. So out of the three boxes, this one wins for the smallest. So that would be the 7Z archive. That's at 406. And then you have the second and uh, lowest is the zip at 411. And then the no compression is 434 out of those three folders. Just using your file manager. I know that you can install software. You can use some of the MX tools. Um, we have um, snapshots. We have uh, all kinds of tools that we can use. I'm just showing you what you can do with your file manager. And you can certainly drag these files uh, doing a different method too. There's another tip for you. If you don't want to do the split pane, you know this thing, 
You can now uh, reduce the size of your window and hit Control N as a NASI to produce another box. And then you can uh, make this the USB drive. And then this one here, let's say uh, your username. And again, Mark is just a made up name. And uh, I'm gonna pick one of these three. And then drag that over. Okay, so I'm using the tartar. Not compressed. Remember, that's not compressed. So whether you choose one or more folders, you can use tar. You can also install a lot of different applications. You can find this one here in enabled repos. And what am I referring to? You can now run grsync. This is a synchronization piece of software. What I can do in this case here, I can synchronize my documents folder to this device here. Okay, this is very simple, easy to use. You can see documents in there. And when I hit go again, nothing will happen. So as you make changes during the week, if you rerun this thing with the same folder to the same device, it has to be mounted first, then you can use this command and it'll actually remove documents out of there. I use uh, script files for this kind of stuff mostly when I'm doing multiple folders. However, I do have some uh, advanced videos also on graphical rsync that uses advanced sessions. In other words, it'll use more than one folder at a time. If you want to take a peek at those, it doesn't matter the distribution. GRSync is GRSync. Okay. However, I'm just using very simple files that you can utilize or stuff in your file manager, Thunar. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thank you.